Hello everyone, this is Zay again from Carnuba Detailing. A few weeks ago I received a comment requesting me to make a video on how to properly compound and polish a vehicle and something a little bit more tailored to the beginner level when it comes to polishing and compounding. So in order for me to do that, I'm going to take everything step by step for you guys and girls and I'm going to list out also everything that you will need um, right here right now. So the first thing you're going to need is a dual action polisher. Now you don't need the specific dual action polisher. This is Chicago Electric dual action polisher from Harbor Freight. Did a review on this before. It is a great option for beginners. It is very affordable and also provides wonderful results even in beginners hands. But obviously there's other options out there for dual action polishers on the market. Now you can also use a rotary polisher. That's going to require a little bit more expertise, knowledge and time with. Um, it's a little bit, I wouldn't say hazardous or anything like that, but it's a little more difficult and tedious to work with, a little bit more um, tailored towards somebody with experience. So today we're just going to be looking at dual action polishers when it comes to compounding and polishing. The next, things, next thing you're going to need are some towels dedicated just to buff off the access polish and compound. I have those right over there and then also some other microfiber like general purpose microfiber towels to clean off your pad or any other like residue um, from some of the products that we're using okay obviously the next thing you're gonna need is going to be your actual compounds and your actual polishes okay so right here I have Meguiar's 105 it's a heavy cut compound and I have Meguiar's 205 which is a light cut polish okay now the differences between the two polishes um, when it comes to consistency are usually a little bit more liquidy um, their consistency consistency is a little bit thinner reason being there's probably more solvents and oils and polishes than there are in compounds while compounds have more abrasives that's why compounds are heavy cut meaning they cut very um, heavy and strong throughout the polishing process and um, polishes are usually more of a light cut like a finishing polish or a jeweler's polish okay um, you do also have the option of doing a one-step polish like Meguiar's one step over here that's what I got in this little bottle um, it's it's like it states it's a one step you won't be needing two pads like you would with a two-step process such as Meguiar's 105 and 205 you only need one pad probably either a heavy cut or a medium cut pad for something like this and you'd be able to take care of your vehicle with that one product and that single pad um, and when I mean single pad I mean type of pad you might need multiple types of that same exact pad in order to complete your car because pads do get dirty throughout the process but as long as you're cleaning them throughout your polishing process and maintaining them you should be okay with about one or two the next thing you're gonna need let me just put these back over here is going to be some type of lubricant for your pads and also the surface of the paint. I'm just using a mix of distilled water and Optimum No Rinse. That's probably one of my favorite options. Some people just go straight up water. Honestly, it's all personal preference. I just believe this works the best for me personally, okay? The next thing you're going to need is also some kind of paint prep. I go with the classic 50% isopropyl isopropyl alcohol excuse me and 50 percent distilled water just a regular ipa mix but any kind of automotive paint prep will substitute for that you will also be needing some type of clay bar i have this one right over here you would need this in order to properly decontaminate the surface of the paint prior to polishing and compounding okay and obviously another thing that you will be needing are your pads for your dual action polisher polish you do I can't talk today guys I am so sorry you will be needing your pads for your dual action polish polisher Wow I have a heavy cut right over here so the heavy cut obviously is gonna go with your Meguiar's 105 and then a lighter cut type of pad such as this one over here I label all my pads as well is gonna go with our Meguiar's 205 okay now like I said if you decide to go with the one-step polish such as this um, and you're still looking for a decent amount of cut 
Obviously, this won't have the same exact cut as Meguiar's 105 would, but you will still be able to remove a lot of defects with a one-step. All right, but it does save you time going this route. You will be able to remove more defects and um, scratches and swirl marks with a two-step polish such as these, okay? But if I'm using something like this, I'd probably go with a heavy cut pad or a medium cut pad. I will not go with a light cut pad because I'm still looking to get some type of defect removal. Now the differences between the pads and why one's heavy cut and one is a light cut is just the stiffness, the consistency of the pores. Um, this is a lot harder. It's not as soft as this pad over here and it gives it a little bit more cut throughout the polishing process, okay? Um, the colors of the pad honestly all depend on the manufacturer. If you go to Chemical Guys, an orange pad might mean light cut. While you go to Meguiar's, a blue pad might mean heavy cut. It all depends on the manufacturer. So look at who the manufacturer is and go off of what they are telling you. Okay? So that's pretty much all you will be needing. Oh yeah, and I need an extension cord because the Harbor Freight wire is way too short. But there are polishers that do come with like a 12 foot cord nowadays so that all depends on you and what type of polisher that you have but we are going to move on to the actual claying process now so i'll be right back with you guys if you need to clay or if you want to figure out if you need to clay your vehicle wear a pair of rubber, rubber gloves or maybe a ziploc bag over your hand and go ahead and just rub the surface of the paint i don't know if you guys can hear that but I can, I can also feel some friction between the glove itself and the paint as well. So there are some embedded contaminants in the surface of this paint that we're gonna take care of with the clay. Now, when you purchase your clay, um, it usually comes into like a cube or a square. Um, you're gonna wanna fold it into a patty shape such as this. And then you're gonna take your lubrication, whether it be soapy water or o &R in water or just water. Um, it's all up to you. I usually use O&R and distilled water for my type of lubrication and I just spray the surface real quick. A lot of some people work in a two by two or three by three area. I mean, honestly, at the end of the day, if I'm trying to get things done, I might do half the hood all at once because you will be polishing the vehicle and compounding it. So as long as you're removing the embedded contaminants from the paint, you'll be okay. Now, when you're claying the vehicle, you have to remember that claying it is an abrasive process. You are scratching the surface of the paint, but not to worry because you are going to be compounding and polishing it right after. So you don't want to clay the vehicle after like every wash or you, you only clay the vehicle when you need to clay the vehicle, okay? When you, when you feel and you hear that there's a lot of contaminants in the surface of the paint, that's when you clay the vehicle. Now what the clay does, you gotta imagine the paint as skin and the clay is basically exfoliating the skin. It's removing any type of dirt or contaminants out of the pores of the paint, all right? When you clay the vehicle, you just want to go up and down, straight lines. Do not go in circular motions, okay? You have to remember this is causing some type of abrasive action onto the paint, all right? So you don't want scratches that go in circles. Those are harder to remove and they're a lot easier to see with the naked eye when the sunlight reflects off of them. Straighter scratches are easier to remove and harder to see with the naked eye. So as you're claying, you will notice the paint getting smoother throughout and you might be hearing less noise because you are removing those embedded contaminants, all right? This process does take some time. It's very tedious once in a while, but sometimes it does have to be done depending on how bad the paint really is. Honestly, this paint wasn't too bad. It was kind of borderline whether I would have to clay it or not, but better to be safe than sorry. All right, so after that, you just take your clay, and now what was once um, more of a bluish,
clay is now turning gray in certain areas. I'll show you real quick. I don't know if you guys can see that. So the paint was honestly not too bad, but I do see some areas with some brown and gray spots throughout the clay. Uh, so now you would just take your general purpose microfiber towel and you're just going to wipe down the area that you worked on, okay? Just like that. All right, so now if you just want to go back and test the surface again, there is ONR still on here, so it's causing it to be slick, but let that flash real quick and we'll get back into it. So now the paint is a lot smoother. I don't hear as much noise as I did before. So this part has been properly decontaminated. Um, the next thing you would have to do is move on to your IPA stage or your paint prep stage, okay? All right, guys and girls. So I went ahead and I clayed the rest of the front hood on the Kia, but now we're just gonna move into our IPA stage or a paint prep stage. Um, remember, I'm just using 50% water and 50% um, alcohol. Not Jameson, isopropyl alcohol. I know what you guys are thinking, okay? Um, so all you have to do is spray the area that you clayed after you're done drying the area of your ONR solution while you're claying. Spray the area down with your IPA or um, paint prep solution. And all you have to do is just wipe it down. I always like working in straight line motions when I do a lot of things. And because it's alcohol and water, it should flash really fast. And that's what it's doing right now. Perfect. So now your paint is prepped and ready to get compounded and polished. And that's what we're gonna move on to next, okay? All right, guys and girls. So I'm just gonna go over how to um, get your pad ready and how to prime the pad as well so i did use this pad just yesterday on another client's vehicle so i will have to clean this but that is good because i get to show you guys how i do it on the spot if i don't have access to um, flowing water or any kind of pressurized air so there is compound or polish whatever i was using on the t at the time still in the pores of this pad so what we have to do is clean that out and all i do is spray my o r solution onto the pad like that then i would take um, one of my general purpose microfiber towels open it up like so and i just place the pad in the palm of my hands wrap the towel around the pad itself i bring the rpm at around level three hold on tight just wipe it down so it removed any kind of embedded polish or compound and any of the dust that was left over in the pad now we have a nice clean and ready to go pad now we're just going to have to prime the pad itself as well so i'm going to be going over a two-step process with you guys and girls because it's a more in-depth um, process that you have to go through rather than just the one step and um, the one step is pretty much the same thing you just eliminate the the second um, type of polish you're just using one type of polish and one type of pad all right so what you're going to want to do is shake up your compound. I'm going to be starting off with Meguiar's 105. We always start off with a heavy cut. Whoa, that exploded on me. Sorry about that. <laughs> Snap, crackle, pop. All right. Well, I'm going to clean that up in a little bit. Um, you just have to take your compound. And I just start off with about three to four dots make it five and just rub the compound i recommend to use gloves while doing this by the way just rub the compound into the pad itself all right you want to cover the whole pad with the compound or polish okay 
The reason why you do this, it gets all the pores and fibers of the pad ready immediately when you start polishing, okay? That's the idea behind this, and it does work pretty well. So just take a little bit more and just rub that all in. So when you have the whole pad covered with compound and polish, you are pretty much set to go when it comes to the compounding process. So I'm going to bring you guys back to the car real quick. So we, we um, prepped and primed our pad, and now we're going to go compound, okay? And before we start compounding the actual paint, I did forget to mention, if you do get a chance, grab a permanent marker and draw one black line on your backing plate of your dual action polisher. What this is telling you, what this does, if this line stops spinning consistently, or it should be the other way, stops spinning, it means your pad is not um, working for you any longer. And the reason why this happened is dual action polishers have a safety mechanism in them where it stops the spinning rotation when you hit any kind of concave or convex surfaces or any high points on the paint so you don't burn through the clear coat or the paint itself. So that's why I love dual action polishers so much. Really great and helpful. So just make sure to draw a line so you know whether your pad is actually spinning and doing work or if it is not. But after you're done priming the pad, you can also put some other two or three other pea-sized dots if you'd like into the pad, but you don't have to because the pad is already primed for the most part. And all you do is I just dab it. I'm going to just be working on this one section over here, about a three by three if you're working on some more um, heavy um, defect paints, maybe a two by two section. And I start off at level one, all right? just to spread out the product, okay? All right, guys and girls, so I spread out the product and always remember, never turn on the dual action polisher when it's not touching the paint. The reason why I say that is you're going to have polish and compound slinging everywhere if you do it, okay? So when you turn it on, put it on the paint, then turn it on. Um, when you're turning it off, keep it on the paint, turn it off, let it stop spinning, and then remove the actual polisher itself, all right? So I'm just going to boost it up to about four or five, and we're going to actually start the compounding process on the hood. gonna remove the pad real quick and then I'm just gonna take my polishing buffing towel that I showed you guys before just dedicated to remove excess polish and buff off the surface all right just straight lines when you're removing your polish okay flip to the other side and keep on going until you removed all the polish on the surface of the paint. Now, if you are working in um, warmer weather, if you're working outside in the sun, sometimes these compound and polishes give you a tough time when removing them. Um, just a little spritz of your paint prep or your 50-50 alcohol with water, your IPA, can help you remove them, okay? 
So I'm going to take you further into the paint just to give you a closer look and see what's going on between this side and the side we haven't touched yet with the heavy cut of the compound, okay? All right, everyone. I don't know if you guys can see this very well, but I really hope you guys can. So this is the side that we just compounded and polished. And then I'm moving on to the side that we haven't yet. I don't know if you guys can see the swirl marks on this side. And the lack of swirl marks on this side. Now this is metallic um, black paint, so it's a little more difficult to see the defect removal and the swirl marks. But there is a big difference between the two when it comes to defects and also gloss and shine. So that's just the first step of the compounding process. Um, obviously, if you have more defects that you would like to remove, I'm not going to go too heavy on defect removal on this car because it's not really a big deal for me. Um, but you can go another round with a heavy cut and then move on to your light cut or your jeweler's polish. Okay, but that's the difference between the two sides as of now. All right, guys and girls, so I went ahead and I primed the light cut pad with the Meguiar's 205, um, the light cut polish, and we are going to move on to the polishing stage on the left side of the hood real quick. So same thing, guys, um, just go in slow motions. It should take you about 40 to 60 seconds throughout the process itself. Start off at level one, go and up and down, zigzag, not up, not zigzag, but up and down, criss, cross, and hatch motions. Um, I mean, I should just say cross hatch motions, excuse me, um, throughout the whole process. Make sure you're taking it slow. Light pressure to no pressure at all. Let the polisher do the work for you, okay? Just dabbing it. Remember to start off at level one in order to um, spread the polish out. So I did get a new um, buffing towel. I really don't like using the same towel for my compound and my polishes. I really don't want to do any kind of cross contamination between the two. So I got a fresh new buffing towel. All right, I'm just gonna buff off the excess residue, okay? Oh yeah, that looks a whole lot better. Yup. Awesome. The little baby Kia's getting a little makeover. All right. I'm sorry, guys. I honestly do not show too much attention to this car compared to my others. So, okay. So I'm going to bring you guys back into the paint once again to show you guys the difference between the side that we've completed both with the heavy cut and the light cut, and then the side that we didn't do anything to, okay? All right, so I got my flashlight on me again. So that's the side that we were just working on. No real visible defects throughout for the most part. Okay. And I'm gonna move to the side that we didn't even touch yet. You can see a lot more swirl marks. There's a lot of water spots and etching throughout the side of the paint. 
it's just a big difference when it comes to shine and gloss as well. Now we're moving back on to the side that we've completed, okay? That's the difference between the two, all right, guys? So basically, that's the kind of results that I was looking for. Now you can take it a step further. It's very close to impossible to get perfection, especially on OEM paint, especially from something like a Kia Rio. But you can get pretty darn close if you put just a little bit more time and effort into it. But this just goes to show you, you don't need a $350 Rupes dual action polisher and a bunch of fancy equipment and lighting and tools. I'm just using two regular LED work lights, a Harbor Freight dual action polisher. Um, the two types of polishes and compounds that we're using were professional grade polishes and compounds, but Meguiar's does have more of a consumer level line. I believe it's called their Ultimate, and they have an Ultimate Compound, an Ultimate Polish. I have used them before, they do work really good. Obviously not as good as the professional stuff, but they do get you really good results, okay? You might not get to as close of a defect removal as we did on the Kia Rio today with the um, M205 and M105, but you can get um, pretty close to the point where it's not really noticeable unless you're really paying attention to it and looking at it with a, a flashlight or something like that, okay? Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Obviously, after you're done polishing your vehicle throughout, make sure to apply some type of protectant to it. If you're using a one step such as the one from Meguiar's I showed you prior in the video, it does have some type of protection along with the polish itself. It's more of a sealant, lasts a few months, but it's nothing really special. I recommend Meguiar's Ultimate Fast Finish. That's a great sealant. I personally use for my clients McKees 37. Um, SiO2 enhanced coating and also Meguiar's Gold Class is a pretty good um, consumer level wax if you're looking for a little bit more depth, depth and gloss. Um, besides that, one of my favorite waxes that I purchased for my vehicles and some of my other clients that are looking for something a little bit more high end in quality, shine, gloss, and protection and longevity is P21s really good stuff it's about forty dollars or so but it's honestly all worth it there are other waxes and sealants and coatings that are far more expensive but work what's within your budget and what results that you require from yourself and your vehicle okay i'm not looking for protect perfection i already told you guys before when it comes to this car but no problem giving it a little bit more gloss and shine okay i really hope you guys enjoyed the video if you have any questions comments or concerns Put them below in the comment section. If you guys like the video, leave a thumbs up. And remember to subscribe. Thank you so much, and I hope you guys all have a great day. Bye-bye.